The news never stops, neither do we. Time for your WNCT News Update. Here's Patrick Johnson. And a very pleasant good morning, everyone. Thanks for being with us. Here's what's happening. A Greenville man is behind bars for his possible role in a murder that happened last year. Greenville police say 31-year-old DeBracy Barnes is facing charges for the murder of Christopher Bullock. Police say they responded to shots fired on Vance Street around 930 on the night of August 30th last year. They found Bullock on West 5th Street. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. Barnes was a suspect early in the investigation, but new evidence solidified the case that led to Wednesday's arrest. In Pamlico County, one man has been arrested after a search warrant related to a residential breaking and entering that resulted in stolen guns. David O'Neill is facing multiple charges, including possession of a stolen firearm and weapons of mass destruction. Investigators say while searching his home, they also discovered that O'Neill attempted to use a 3D printer to create parts of a firearm. O'Neill was placed at the Pamlico County Detention Center on a $515,000 bond. Law enforcement across the state say untraceable guns, known as ghost guns, are becoming a problem. According to the ATF, ghost guns have been recovered in the state, and those recoveries have more than doubled between 21 and 22. The agency says so far this year, more than 500 have been recovered in North Carolina. Since the guns don't have serial numbers, they can't be traced. It is illegal for people who are allowed to own a gun to build a ghost gun for personal use. The ATF says the guns can then be sold, but that dealer has to add a serial number. Closer to home, Pitt County Schools is working to keep their students and staff safe with new weapons detection technology. The weapons detectors come from the company SIA, who works with thousands of school systems across the nation. The detectors work at a high speed and screen hundreds of book bags per minute. If it sees something that is out of the ordinary, it sounds and shows an alert. All high schools of Pitt County will have two of these new detectors. Each elementary and middle school will have one. Anyone who comes into the buildings will have to go through the detector. And as Croatan High School students head back to campus for the new school year, they'll notice a new addition to the school. A new wing adds 14 classrooms for the entire English department and exceptional children classes. The school has over 1,000 students this year, so extra space was needed. The teachers are moving in and eager to begin along with their new principal. The wing also features a state-of-the-art culinary kitchen for their CTE programs. ECU Health is providing back-to-school vaccinations. Students entering kindergarten, 7th, and 12th grades must have required immunizations. Today, starting at 10, students can receive their required vaccines at the ECU Health Community Health Programs. That's located at 604A Medical Drive. Wake County DA is continuing to support her office's decision not to investigate allegations against Speaker Tim Moore. A letter was sent to Attorney Lauren Freeman asking for a deeper look into whether Moore should be charged with embezzlement or misconduct in public office. Freeman, Lauren Freeman's decision is in response to a lawsuit filed against the Republican leader in June for reportedly having an affair with a former Apex Council member's wife, who is a state employee. Moore is accused of causing the couple's marriage to end and abuse of power. That suit was later dropped. Let's go down to the Storm Team 9 Weather Center with a look at the forecast. Here's meteorologist Rob Martin. Pleasant conditions getting underway this Thursday morning, then mostly sunny skies this afternoon. A low humidity, highs in the mid-80s at the coast to around 90 for the inland areas. Overnight lows in the low to mid-70s. Hot on your Friday, upper 80s at the coast, mid to upper 90s for the inland areas. Real feels around 105 degrees. Spotty thunderstorm chances start Friday night through the weekend. Real feels hot again on Saturday, coming down a bit on a Sunday. From the Storm Team 9 Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Rob Martin for Talk 96.3 and 103.7. All right, a tour of current temperatures in the east. It's 66 degrees in Greenville, 70 in New Bern, 65 in Washington. Same for Jacksonville with sunny skies, 75 in Moorhead City, and 67 in Edenton. Shout out. Talk of the town getting underway coming up after these words on Talk 96.3, 103.7 and the IBX Media app. A huge selection of new Toyotas is ready to go at Greenville Toyota. Rush in for the one you want before it's gone. Camrys, just $269 a month. RAV4s, ready to go for just $289 a month. Now at Greenville Toyota. Acre Station Meat Farm, along with Lane Angus Beef, bring you Farm to Fork Beef. 
Stock your freezers now with affordable beef boxes just in time for the grilling season. Farm to Fork Beef brings quality local beef to your family. From your traditional butcher shop, Acre Station Meat Farm. Come on down to Acre Station Meat Farm and find out why we're number one in fresh cuts and friendly service. Acre Station Meat Farm, Highway 32 North, Pine Town. Other restaurants claim their food is fresh and fast, but are they friendly? At Moore's, you're treated like family the minute you walk into their doors. With locations in Winterville, New Bern, Swansboro, Moorhead City, and Jacksonville, we've been practicing what we preach since 1945. At Moore's, our barbecue is slow-cooked and smoked over real wood daily until it's so tender it's falling off the bone. Combined with our fresh chicken, cooked-to-order seafood, and homemade fixins, we're sure you'll agree, if it's not Moore's, it's less. At GoEco, we don't just supply the office space. We create solutions for any environment. Our state-of-the-art commercial-grade video display is perfect for watching film with the team. From film study to the field, elevate your game with GoEco. season is approaching. North Carolina weather can damage your roof and before long a small leak can turn into a big problem. Your home is one of your biggest investments so protect it with Wells Home Improvements. We work with all insurance companies for a hassle-free roof installation experience. Call us today and get 10% off your roof installation when you mention this commercial. 252-227-8403 or visit us online at wellshomeimprovements.com. Wells Home Improvements. Local. Honest. Dependable. New Toyotas are ready to go at Greenville Toyota. Shop a huge selection with new inventory arriving daily. Don't see what you want? We'll find it or order it for you. Plus, fresh trades are rolling in and ready to go for delivery today. Rush to Greenville Toyota. Always waking you up on the right side of the bed. Sexy, sassy, and full of spunk. News, weather, sports, and all the other stuff you need to get your day going. This is Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. Get some therapy. And Patrick Johnson. Well, it was chocolate. What was I going to say? No. Now, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Hey, good morning and welcome, everybody. Thursday morning, August 24th, 67 degrees as we uh, join you here live this morning from our studio. We are live in uh, Interbank's Media National International Headquarters, going to a high today of 91 degrees. And no chance of rain today either, so uh, welcome to the program. Big day on the show. Uh, we're going to talk about last night's debate, give you a chance to give your opinions. Whoa. And uh, yeah, you know what that means? Well, open line Thursday. Well, open it means line that I was, I was up late. I watched the whole thing, and I didn't do any show prep. <laughs> <laughs> but I figure that's what everybody wants to talk about today. Anyway, Michael, well, turn me up a little bit, if you would, please. So I, I flipped it by there, and there was just – I saw the Pence, uh, Riswami. I mean, it's just – it was just – it was like one of their ridiculous panel shows on cable news. Everybody was talking over each other, dropping bad rehearsed lines. I, I So I gave up on that. I, I checked out the Trump thing on Twitter, and he's talking about was uh, – was, uh, 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 what, what's the guy's name? Um, the island guy. The island guy. The guy, the the, the sexual predator guy. The uh, oh, Epstein. Did Epstein off himself? So Trump's rambling on that. Then he starts talking about 2020, and I said, "The hell with this. I'm going to bed." I don't. Is, I don't agree with you. I, I, I was. I was riveted by. That. I couldn't turn it off. I really had. Well, and I had intended I to watch the uh, first hour. And uh, to be completely honest with you, I, I just couldn't turn it off. I mean, I, I and I've I've made some notes here. I got my analysis, but we'll open up the phone lines if people want to give their comments here in a few minutes. I'm already getting some emails from some of our great listeners, so we'd love to hear what you think about it. Um, 
let me mention this though next hour in the eight o'clock think about eight fifteen, we're gonna have doug gray from uh the marshall tucker band hey now what a week of guests huh we had martha mccallum right who had a really hard time keeping things under control last night. <laughs> boy not a uh uh, it just got out of hand several times. It was that that was a little painful to yeah. watch, and I felt sorry Not, for uh, for her. Yeah, that's and, what uh, I mean. It was it was chaos. It was like it, hurting it, cats. It did get chaotic, but I mean that that's part of it i mean you know that did not that's the problem with having eight people up there but um doug gray from marshall tucker man uh, the marshall tucker band will be uh headlining the winterville watermelon festival on saturday night and uh, doug gray who is the co-founder lead singer for the marshall tucker band is going to be with us this morning and uh, uh we have got uh two tickets to the show saturday night and two backstage passes so you can meet the band uh, we're going to give those away at the end of the Doug Gray interview, which will happen around 8.15 this morning. So hang on for that. So so this is uh, – here's my little analysis. Here are the notes that I made this morning. Number one, I thought, uh, I thought the question that Martha McCallum started it off with was excellent. The, the, the Fox production got in the way of, of the opportunity for them to speak a lot, I thought. There was too much glitz at the beginning, but I mean, it's it was the typical kind of uh, it's a new day in America kind of stuff, you know, that kind of stuff, showing Milwaukee and but but they when they when they finally yeah. got into it, Martha McCallum's first question was about the Rich Man song, the Rich Man North of Richmond song, which I thought was great because it kind of gave them all an opportunity to kind of get into what's wrong with America and where we're going and that kind of thing. So I, I thought that was a great way to start. If, if you if you ask me who the biggest newsmaker was after last night's debate, I would have to say it was either Ramaswamy or Nikki Haley. Um, but, but if you ask me who delivered the haymakers and, and I told you yesterday that this was going to happen. And I think that Chris Christie was the most important person on the stage in terms of how the debate went than anybody else, because right out of the gate, he's, he's, he's delivering haymakers to these guys. Uh, you know, he hammered Trump all night long, but he also hammered Ramaswamy. All of them hammered Ramaswamy. So the the um, the memo that got leaked over the weekend that we you know where DeSantis's people were saying you got to go after Ramaswamy they all kind of subscribed to that theory if you ask me, but the the biggest kind of haymaker of the night was when <laughs> when Chris Christie said that uh, uh, you know I don't know you, you got the feeling that Ramaswamy's kind of a smart ass kind of a know it all uh 38 year old um and and immediately christy took him down a notch <laughs> with the line that you know hey this guy's saying that um you know who's this who's this skinny guy up here in the middle of the debate stage with a funny name christy's response to that was um the last guy who said that was a barack obama and i'm afraid we're dealing with the same type of amateur <laughs> so wow did you did you miss that? Oh, I mean, was... I I I told you I couldn't. Oh. I mean, I couldn't follow it. I was overloaded, too stimulated. Chris, it was time to go to bed. Christy, uh, he's a windbag. Chris, he's Christy, a tub of goo windbag. You know what? He played an important role last night because he made it okay to go after Trump, and you know the the only person up there that really was not willing to go after Trump was Ramaswamy, which I thought kind of told the story of who he is. He's working to be Trump's vice presidential guy. I think he's trying to get on the ticket. Uh, he kept saying, you know, I'm the young outsider. I'm the new generation. It's about revolution. Uh, but he made some ridiculous points, and they made him look stupid. Nikki Haley made him look really bad on foreign policy. She took him down to his knees Um Everybody well, up there. That's a strength of hers. I mean, that is a strength of hers. Nikki Haley was good last night. Now the problem is when you've got the Chris Christie effect up there. Win e back. Even if you deliver a uh, you know a very strong line, it still pales in comparison to what Christie is saying because Christie will just hammer you, and 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 he played that role last night. Now. 
the guy who I so, so what about DeSantis? Yeah. I guy. thought he was I thought he was solid but a little bit boring. You know, I don't know what other people think about that. We're going to open up the phone lines here in a minute and let you sit, give us your thoughts. 252 <clears throat> He he uh he also disappointed me when he would not give a straight answer to the question if Mike Pence did the right thing on January 6th. I was really disappointed in DeSantis's response to that. <clears throat> but I think, again, you know, DeSantis's handlers are probably telling him, don't go after Trump. Don't go after Trump. You, you have to have Trump supporters. So, that, you know, but, but let me ask you a question. If, if you don't believe that he did the right thing, that Mike Pence did the right thing on January 6th, then you're more than a Trump supporter. You've got your head in the sand. And so, you know, just go ahead and answer that question, DeSantis, and he didn't do that. DeSantis, interestingly, was not attacked. You know, you would have thought that he, I mean, he's the front runner, you know, of that, of those eight He's the front runner in Iowa, but he, he did not get attacked. But um, and, and I liked a lot of the things that DeSantis had to say. I will just say that his style comes off as a little annoying. <laughs> Does anybody else feel that? <laughs> he just, you know, he's kind of got that whiny, uh, responsive tone to his voice. And, uh, you know, he's not a great looking guy. Uh, you know, up standing up there next to Ramaswamy, who's, you know, the young, suave hipster, <laughs> you know, I don't know. What, let's open up the phone lines and see what other people think. Did, Two, did Ramaswamy get called out for any of his statements on drugs? No, but he, on he was 9/11? the only he was the only person up there that said we should stop funding the Ukraine war. And Nikki oh. Haley absolutely be slapped him on that. And, you know, his whole attitude about it was that we're playing into Russia's hands and it's just pushing Russia into China's arms and yada, yada. And, you know, look, that's insane. That is insane. You know, if you want to pity Pat uh, uh, Vladimir Putin, look at what happened yesterday. You know, you don't, you, you don't play handsy with Vladimir Putin. You show him strength. And... Um, you know what we saw yesterday. You know, you know the, that the guy Prigozhin that head up the Wagner uh, mercenary group. You know, he he shot him out of the sky and killed him. You know, I'm just surprised it took 60 days for it to happen. It it was all it was 60 days to the day that that uh, Prigozhin made his march on Moscow to try to take uh, try to take uh, Putin out, and you know he shot his plane out of the sky yesterday. You know, Nikki Haley made a point last night. Hey, when I was uh, Secretary of State, he um, uh, he um, he had the uh, U.S. ambassador to Russia killed, murdered. He's a murderer. So you know, you want to play uh, a patty so, cake? So you with think the- you you want us to just give the Ukraine billions of dollars, unfed, no oversight, none of that. I mean, that's that's the ridiculous part of this I, whole thing. I, I, I do worry about the oversight, but I do believe that we have to support Ukraine in this war. I really do believe that. And by the way, ah. everybody, everybody up there did. But, you know, I think Ramaswamy just plays to the red meat base on those kind of issues because that's what Trump's doing. I felt like Ramaswamy just kind of followed a lot of the Trump narrative last night. And let me say this. I think every one of them up there, all eight of them up there, are more highly intelligent than Donald Trump, and 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 they show more class. Now, you know the the, the guys on the ends, uh, Bergen or Bur- Bergen, oh, whatever his name is, right. the, the yeah. uh, governor from North awful. Dakota, he made some very good points. But I mean, he uh, looks like Count Chocula. He <laughs> looked nervous. He looked I expected so him to reach over there. at any moment and bite Nikki Haley on the neck. I <laughs> want to bite your neck. <laughs> And but, then you know, his his whole uh, stick was, I'm a small town guy, and you know, I know what small town values are, and all this. And look, I we all like that, but I mean, let's face it, it's 2023, and that ain't that ain't prime time stuff. You know, you're not running for governor, you're running for the president of the United States. 
Asa Hutchinson made some very good points, I think. But both of them just, uh, you know, took up time that didn't need to be taken up. But Asa Hutchinson did make some very good points, and he was the only person on the stage that refused to say that I will support Donald Trump if he's the nominee. DeSantis, again, was kind of mealy mouth about it, kind of wishy-washy on that. So I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see what the polls show. I'm not sure DeSantis helped himself last night. Ramaswamy and Nikki Haley, in my opinion, stole the show. Chris Christie sucked all the air out of the room with his zingers. Uh, what do you think? 252-561-8255. 252-561-8255. Who, who helped themselves last night? Who hurt themselves last night? I don't think DeSantis really hurt himself last night. I'm just not sure that he helped himself. That's kind of where I am on it this morning. Two five two five six one eight two five five. What are we going? Yeah, and and here, it, it, call me and let me hear some of your comments. The the um, the other thing that I would say is that um, I hate to see a debate where everyone is talking about the country being in decline. But it's it's hard to argue that it's not with the way inner cities now look and the way people are acting in, uh, uh, you know, uh, smash and grab and all that kind of stuff. I, I was disappointed there was zero discussion last night about the woke culture. There was zero discussion last night about this transgender movement. I wanted to hear what they had to say. And, uh, you, you know, the other thing that that, that hit me was, if Trump were up there, how would he be answering any of these questions? And would it change the way that these guys were answering their questions? The great Benny Hardy will lead us off this morning. Benny has, uh, I'm sure he has uh, plenty of notes. Benny, I'm sure you studied the, the candidates last night. What are your thoughts this morning? Well, I've just been listening to you hammer DeSantis. Uh, <laughs> a couple I'm not things. hammering DeSantis. Did, did, do, do you take that I'm hammering him? Well, a couple things you missed on DeSantis. Number one, DeSantis, along with Ramaswamy, also said he would not support the Ukraine war. He raised his hand to say that you know he would not give money to the Ukraine war. So that was a big Are you thing sure that, about uh, that? Oh, I'm absolutely sure about that. Um, you can go back and look at it. Um, you know, no, no one followed up on him with it because you know Ramaswamy was so because he just interjected. And, you know, just, you know, jumped in on that issue. And then it was kind of just, you know, a fight between him and uh, Nikki Haley, you know, kind of inspired the end. So, did you, do you, you, know, did you, do you agree with me that Ramaswamy kind of came off as kind of a know it all generation Xer? <laughs> well, for us to have to work with him, we, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I mean, really, he was a little, he was a little sophomore, to be honest with you. He was a little immature. Um, but he was clearly, I thought, uh, I think you might have said, uh, I'd agree with it if you said it, but um, I think he clearly was running for vice president. You know, I do too. He, he, you know, and that's, you know, he didn't say anything bad about Trump necessarily, but I think the one part that DeSantis missed an opportunity on with Mike Pence, you talked about Mike Pence and the whole January 6th issue. And, and you know, what went on January 6th, you know, it shouldn't have happened, but Mike Pence would lead you to believe that, you know, he was up there dodging mortar fire, you know, raising his hand to certify the election. And that's just, <laughs> that's just nonsense. I didn't get that from Pence last night. Well, you're a Pence guy. I know you, I know you wrote Wait a minute. I, wait a minute. I'm not a Pence guy. You're, <laughs> you, you, you're, 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 you're trying to characterize me incorrectly, Benny. <laughs> but, I'm not, I'm but not, not, I'm not a Pence guy. I would not, out of those eight, I would not vote for Pence. After but last he, night. I, I'm not quite uh, what, sure who I'd vote for, but go ahead. Well, well, here's what I think DeSantis missed an opportunity with Mike Pence and this whole January 6th issue. Mike Pence should have fired, or, or Ron DeSantis should have fired back at Mike Pence and said, well, Vice President Pence, if you were so constitutionally sure what your duties were, then why last year in Congress did they have to pass a bill to specifically – discuss what the vice presidential's duties were during certification of election and that's that's the that's the argument i'd like to have with democrats 
that's what the argument I'd like to have with anti-Trumpers. The argument I'd like to have if I was a lawyer arguing against someone that's charging Trump for this. If you think Trump was trying to take over the government, then why did Congress in 2022 pass a law to, to make it more specific what the vice presidential duties were? So I, I think Pence missed an opportunity to jump on that without without attacking Trump. Or uh, you mean DeSa- think, you mean DeSantis? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. DeSantis should have missed opportunity. That's a, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point. And and then he kind of he could kind of drag a little bit of those Trump supporters with him that. You know, he's not up there bashing Trump, and which I don't think DeSantis did bash Trump. I thought he did a good job of not bashing Trump. My, my biggest surprise this night was really Nikki Haley's performance. I thought she did really well. I did, too. Uh, I did, too. I thought I, she I was good. Now, I didn't, I didn't give my any feelings. I didn't give any of my feelings about Pence. Here's, here's my feelings about Pence. I thought what Pence had to say last night was stronger than I expected from him. I thought he was really good. The problem with Mike Pence is that his demeanor on the stage and his I'm going to get real serious with you now, <laughs> it just it, it just takes away from what he's saying because he looks like an actor saying it. He looks like a bad actor trying to say it because he'll get that real, you know, he'll squint his eyes and he'll he'll stop and he'll just pause and, he'll, and then he'll start every comment with, look, and I'm like, man, just answer the damn question, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that. I mean, Pence is—he looks like a B-rated actor. He's to just play way, him. way, way too dramatic, and, uh, and I don't know. And his and his self-awareness is so bad. I mean, he's like a guy that walks around a locker room like he's very confident, and he shouldn't be confident. If you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> I do know what you mean. I know that guy. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, and Mike Pence is that guy on the stage. I mean, uh, unlike a, unlike me, who would always turn my back and make sure I had the towel around me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Mike Pence is the only guy in the room that don't realize he's that guy. I mean, that's, that's what's so funny about him. I just so. think he's trying to be that guy, you know. I think he's trying to be the, the, the big Lebowski. I'm the guy. I'm the guy. I was also disappointed in Fox News a little bit. I don't know if you – caught on this but brett bear and martha mccallum at some point but especially brett bear we're trying to get you know trying to go after uh the santas with a little bit of gotcha questions that thing that thing on uh when he was trying to hit the santas on the crime in miami when you know what uh, the santas was not the mayor of miami i mean crime overall right. in florida is in good shape but to hit him specifically with miami you know, he, he should have fired back and said, you know, Miami's been a hellhole since 1975. Well, there were lots of gotcha. You know, they hit Christie with a gotcha question about his uh, bond rating when he was the governor of New Jersey. I thought, Chris, look, you can't trip Christie up. Christie, and he doesn't care. He got booed on some of his Trump comments, and he basically fired back at the audience. Hey, yeah, look, we live in a country where you can boo. That's fine. But you know, I I just look. I I I would not vote for for Tr- Christie. I but I think the role that he's played, and and I think that again, if you take Christie in the kind of he kind of set the tone for that thing, and then you turn to Mike Pence, and it's like, oh my God, who turned the who just who just turned the volume down eight times. <laughs> And so I, I, I loved the exchange that Christie had with some of them. I love the way he went after Ramaswamy. I just thought that was, I thought it was great. He went after DeSantis a little bit, but not much. I mean, they laid off DeSantis, didn't they? I think they did. And to your point on Chris Christie, I mean, you know, I mean, his entire career, he's either been on a ticket or he's been in a courtroom arguing. So, I mean, he's argued for a living and then he's been a politician. But, yeah, but he's Chris, also Chris, got that New Jersey um, bite. Yeah, you know? he's got that. Yeah. He's got that bite, man. You know the guy. I, look, I went to college with a bunch of guys from Jersey. They were all just like that. Just they, like, <laughs> exactly like him. If you went to ECU, you went to you went to school with guys from New Jersey. It was just like him. But, but the only thing I'd say about Chris Christie, there's no other guy on that stage that I would trust with a linguine, making a linguine marinara or linguine carbonara than Chris Christie. But that's about it. I mean, that's about it. (laughs) 
Well, he knows he's not going to be president. He knows he's not going to be vice president. He's... I he's think securing more TV work. That's what he basically is up probably, there doing. Probably, probably. And uh, you know what? I'd give it to him. If I was in charge of the networks, I'd put him on every day. <laughs> hey, hey, nothing gets you TV work more than former former presidential candidates. <laughs> in fun- <laughs> I, I, you know, that's what all these guys, that's what these two percenters are doing. You know, they're, right. they're, they got a couple of years where they can go without a job and make some money, and then after that, they'll be a they'll be an expert because they ran for president right. one time. And, I want to hear yeah. from some more folks. Two five two five six one eight two five five. Benny, Benny, uh, who helped himself or herself, and who hurt himself or herself last night? Well, you know, I thought Nikki Haley probably helped herself the most. Probably Ramaswamy, probably. You know, DeSantis probably was a push. He probably didn't hurt himself or help himself all that much. I, you know, I thought Tim Scott's closing was better than anyone because, I mean, let's face it, your, your next step is Iowa. And, you know, he, he specifically addressed the people in Iowa. I thought that was smarter in his closing. And, I, you know, for, for someone that uh, didn't know Doug Burgum, I mean, I thought Doug Burgum did a good job. And what, what little bit of time he had, I mean, he appeared to be – cool calm collective a gentleman i just he 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 i liked him he's a very likable dude i you know but again i kept thinking dracula yeah but you know I, i'm like if he had i mean think about burger if he had the cape and you know the thing behind his head and and uh the fangs i mean he he'd be dracula wouldn't he, he looks like dracula well, I know a little bit about Doug Burgum just because he, I mean, he, he created a, a fabulous company years ago and, and sold it to Microsoft. Actually, I heard him speak probably 30 some years ago at a convention, but, uh, you know, then he's been two term governor. I mean, I like the guy, but I mean, you know, no one knows who he is. I mean, he's, uh, but he, I he seems he like a good guy to be governor. I'm not sure he's presidential material. He's a, he's not ready for prime time. But, the, but the bottom line is, you know, tr- uh, I, I still think. You know, Trump, I don't, I don't think they can take Trump out. But who's going to be Trump's vice president, vice presidential running mate? And it's got to be someone that can win him Georgia. And I think the only person on that stage can win him Georgia is Tim Scott or, or DeSantis. And yeah. and I don't think DeSantis would get on the ticket right. with Trump. All right, Benny. The great Benny Hardy. Great great analysis, Benny. Appreciate your comments. 252-561-8255. Woody in Washington. Good morning, Woody. Tell us what you thought of the debate. First of all, I thought it was a great debate because Trump was not there. If he had been there, it would have all been about him, and he would have been attacking each other. That's right. The candidates were asked questions. The, the American public who was watching actually got to listen to their positions on policy. Mm-hmm. Yes, there was some infighting. Yes, there was some dramatic. But the bottom line is the first debate I've seen in the last 30 years where I actually, as a voter, learned something about where they were on policy. I agree with you, Woody. I, th- I, th- I thought that, that that happened last night. I, I got... I, you know, I, I, I was really glad to be able to learn more about Ramaswamy and Benny thinks that he helped himself. I think he hurt himself. I could be wrong. There's a lot of pundits out this morning. I was watching Fox news this morning. There was kind of a debate about whether he was going to go up or down in the polls, but here's the big thing. You sound like a, a guy like me that is ready for new blood and doesn't want Trump to be the, the nominee. I th- I, do you think, do you agree with me that, after last night, the people in Iowa now have some other choices, and I think it hurt Trump not to be there last night. Well, it may have hurt Trump, but it helped everybody else, and most yeah. importantly, it helped the American public. I agree because with once you. Again, when Trump is there, all he wants to do is attack other people. He never wants to talk about policy. He wants to talk about how great he is. But let's go back and talk about Amasami, or however you pronounce that name. Because the American public is so diverse, there are going to be a lot of uh, younger people who will really go to him. Now, as an older person, he's probably not my candidate. On the other hand, I will say to you, he does bring up a lot of good points. I thought all of them brought up a lot of good points. I thought Nikki Haley did extremely well on the issue of abortion. And I agree with her 100 percent on the fact that we need to quit demonizing that overall. I thought the debate was a great success, but I go back to my first statement. It was a success because Trump was not there sucking the air out of the room about himself. 
and we learned about the policy positions of every candidate. Yep, I, I, I think you got a good point. Very quickly, who would you vote for if you were in Iowa? If I was in Iowa, I would either vote for uh, DeSantis or Nikki Haley. Yeah. Do you do you think DeSantis helped himself or hurt himself last night? I don't know that. I don't think he hurt himself. I don't know that he helped himself. That's the way I feel and about it. I think it, yeah. that's important. A lot yeah. of times, it's important to come out in the same position where you were. Mm-hmm. You don't worry about did I win or did I lose. The key is did I lose any ground, and I don't think he did. Yeah, I thought he did a good job. Yeah, the question for me uh, after watching it is, which one of those do I feel like would be the best general election candidate? Because I don't think it's Trump, and I still think it's DeSantis, but I, I don't know. Other people, I want to hear what other people think. Thank you, Woody. Great comments. Let me, let me, make, one, let me yeah. make one other comment. Look, the American public who are Republicans and conservatives need to quit worrying about being loyal and start thinking about who is electable. Trump is simply not electable. You you are right on target, my friend. I could not agree with I agree with you eight hundred percent. Thank you, Woody. All Thank right, you. Michael, let's do one more and then we're gonna have to move. Two five two five six one eight two five five. We can take more calls later. This is uh Jill in Grifton. I'm glad that we've got a female caller. Jill, I, I presume morning. I presume you identify as a female since your name is Jill. Yes, sir. <laughs> How are you this morning? What are your thoughts? I'm doing great. I am calling in as someone who is um, in the Democratic Party. Okay. But I watched the debate last night because I want to see the um, who is going to be for the Republican Party. I've been watching this for a while. Um, I was most impressed and. My advice to you guys is if you want to win a general election, Nikki Haley is your strongest candidate that can pull the middle. You know, I I really – it's interesting you say that because I think Nikki Haley really did a good job that is going to be very – that is going to resonate with a lot of women and with men. But I really think, you know, women are going to really warm up to Nikki Haley. I mean, she is a smart person. She's got good mm-hmm. experience as a governor and secretary of state. She, uh, not secretary of state, but UN ambassador. She's uh, so mm-hmm. she's got great foreign relations uh, uh, exactly. uh, experience. Uh, she's likable. You know, I was fortunate enough to get to meet her personally. I actually had dinner with her one night uh, when she was governor of South Carolina. Sat right next to her. Had a great conversation. Just very, very, um, uh, very, very affable person. Mm-hmm. Um, she helped herself in a big way last night. Uh, I would say I, I, it is not going to surprise me after last night to see Nikki Haley on the ticket, either mm-hmm. at the top or as the vice presidential candidate. If she were if she were on the ticket as a Democrat, would you vote for her? I like the fact I I I do not believe in. I like the fact that she represented the. Um, women's issue of pro-choice, pro-life. And whether we have a Fed, I I agree with the common sense approach that all of these interests need to be represented. I'm kind of leaning towards the King Solomon approach. Split that baby right down the middle. There's got to be a cutoff. And as long as we're not at viability, I'd say 20 weeks, gestation's at 40. Mm -hmm. At 20 weeks, a child is or a fetus is not viable. Um, and it's up to the mother, and you have gotten way past all of your incidental um, screenings. You've gotten past yeah. the issue of rape or incest or any of those, you know, complicating factors. Um, and what's you what's have wrong a very with, what's wrong with the, the last night? It seemed to, the consensus seemed to be more of a fifteen-week ban. What's wrong with that? My my, here's my thoughts on that. I myself have only had one child, but I, everything was absolutely normal with my pregnancy until I went in for my 17-week blood test, and they told me that it was abnormal. And I had to go in and have amniotic fluid drawn, had to go to genetic screening. Yeah. And here in North Carolina, it's 20 weeks. And luckily, thank God, everything turned well, out fine. Didn't, didn't I waited just, 10 years just, for that baby. They just passed a six-week ban. I mean, a twelve-week man. Yes, that's that. that, that yes, I, I know, and that's that's 
that's not enough time to have a full right, understanding. I, I, I don't. Uh, we got to take a break, but I, but I, it's rare that I get a uh, a a, 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 a rational Democrat on the phone. So, I, <laughs> so I want, let me let me just. Oh, my ask, husband is very Republican, so we I, are living in a divided house. <laughs> So let me ask you this, Jill, uh, and I'm, yeah. I'm having to restrain myself from asking you some kind of ridiculous uh, questions to a Democrat, but I want to ask you this question. It's okay. Can you support Joe Biden in another election? Yes, I can. You can. You, you think he's done a good job. You not do. you you don't buy all the corruption of the of what's happened with his son and his involvement in in all of this uh, money that the family has. Uh, oh, I believe that. The you believe that, but you still and you still I vote for him? that if no no I believe that any that if if there is corruption and it can be proven. And if Hunter Biden has broke the law, then they should go to jail. I, how about I how about how about, no Biden, how about if Biden how about how about if Joe Biden broke the law? You, you don't, after all the evidence that's come out so far, you don't believe that Joe Biden was involved in Hunter Biden's business dealings? I have. It's not been proven to me. I know that there is a lot of innuendo and suspicion and discussion about it. Who but do you I, think the big guy was case, when he was kicked up 10%? If you're waiting for me 10%. to believe Jim Jordan is bringing it, then you're wrong. Jim Jordan's not going to be able to bring it. Well, forget me. Jim Jordan. I mean, the evidence, okay. is, the evidence is becoming overwhelming that he was getting, uh, he was getting money from Ukraine, China. Uh, the whole Burisma thing, you, you don't buy yes, it. Yes, I'm huh? not okay with that. I'm, I'm, I'm not okay with all of that. All right, and last am, question. I'm hey, ready I'm, for Citizens United and money out of politics, if you want to talk about it. Do you, do, you, do you think that Joe Biden has dementia? I do not. Really? I do think that he is elderly, and I do think that he is slower in his speech and with his speech mm -hmm. impediment, but I don't think he is dementia or any. Interesting. Uh, when Interesting. I, yeah. Okay. Those are great. I would love to get you back on sometime. You're you're great. You're. I really enjoyed this. This is. Uh, we need to have this kind of discussion. I more enjoy often. listening to you in the morning. Thank I you. try to, to listen to both sides so that well, I can call understand back where in sometime. Is. We want. I want to talk to you some more. But I got to take a break right now. Thank you, Jill. You go right uh, on. All right. Mm. Seven forty-seven. We'll be right back. The best burgers around. Everyone loves a thick, juicy, and fresh burger. Tiebreakers in Greenville, plus the all-new Tiebreakers in Winterville do real burgers better than anybody. So don't just go to any burger-themed restaurant chain. It's time to break the chain and eat local. Tiebreakers, real burgers at its best. Everybody loves burgers. Turn your backyard into a paradise for your family and friends to enjoy. Pool Pro installs fiberglass pools and above ground pools and they're your local dealer for hot spring spas. Pool Pro is family owned by Mike, Jake and Brooke and has over 40 years of pool building experience. Stop by their brand new showroom and retail store at 227 Beacon Drive in Winterville. Consider Pool Pro for your next pool, hot tub or pool liner replacement. Go online to GreenvillePoolPro.com. Sometimes in life, you just need a fresh coat of paint. Other times, you want a complete makeover. And that's exactly what we've done at the new Greenville Nissan, Eastern North Carolina's Nissan destination. Everything is new inside and out, completely remodeled. Our Nissan showroom is even more comfortable, classy, and cool with the latest technology to make shopping and buying faster, easier, and even more transparent. Every year, more and more people from Greenville, New Bern, Washington, Wilson, and Rocky Mount buy from Greenville Nissan. And now, with our completely renovated facility, even larger selection, and the best Nissan sales and service team, you won't need to shop anywhere else. And this month, we're celebrating our new facility with great offers, like a new 2023 Nissan Rogue with 0% financing. Greenville Nissan is the Nissan destination in Eastern North Carolina. Easy to get to on Greenville Boulevard. Greenville Nissan, where we drive to serve. 0% for 36 months on select models with approved credit ends 831.23. With U.S. Cellular, it's just $19.99 per line for one, two, or three lines. So you don't need that robot daughter you built to get a fourth line for family plan pricing. Oh, Robe Elizabeth? She's not going to like that. The robots will prevail. Oh, boy. Get the low rate of $19.99 per line. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Visit uscellular.com for details. 
Summertime is here. It's a great time to get outside and enjoy the warmer weather and longer days. Let the team at Cellular Warehouse help you start enjoying these days by eliminating the two to three hour wait in the local store. They come right to your home or office and handle all of your cellular needs. Best of all, their front door service is free of charge. Call Toby Williams today at 252-799-7051 and let his team start making life easy again. That's 252-799-7051. Cellular Warehouse, your local U.S. Cellular Authorized Agent. Now, back to Talk of the Town. Best of the best of the best. On Talk 96.3 and 103.7. Doug Gray, the lead singer and co-founder of the Marshall Tucker Band, coming up in about uh, 15, 20 minutes here. And we're going to give away tickets to see them a Saturday night at the Winterville Watermelon Festival and two backstage passes, so stay tuned for that. Patrick also has sports here in just a second, but a couple of follow-ups uh, a lot of social media stuff uh, that we're getting on the debate. Um, first of all, I, you know, I really enjoyed that exchange with Jill, the Democrat, but I, I, it, it baffles me that Democrats are willing to, to believe that, Hunter, that, that Joe Biden is not involved in the Hunter Biden corruption. It baffles me. Well, because here's the, what I uh, would say about Jill, Big Hen. I think her hesitation was she pro- – and I'm just reading into it. This is speculative – I think she realizes Trump is probably going to be the nominee, and she would not vote for Donald Trump over Joe Biden. I think many yeah. Democrats are in that position. Again, I'm being presumptive in in putting words in her mouth, possibly. But 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 she consider Nikki me, Haley. Yeah, well, it sounds to me like she would consider another candidate. Uh, so we'll we'll see. But you know what's really interesting about that? She's a Democrat, but think about now. That's a Democrat saying that. Think about. The independent voters that are, are who are the ones who are going to decide this thing. Yeah, yeah. If a Democrat feels that way, you know, you got to feel like uh, uh, any other candidate other than Trump is going to be more appealing to to independent voters. A couple of a uh, couple of social media things. Uh, my buddy Warren down in Green- in uh, Jacksonville says regarding the interaction between participants, I thought it was great. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I really appreciated the spirited and feistiness of the exchanges. We were able to see each each person's personality and commitment to certain issues. I also appreciated that they were not afraid to take charge of the forum discussion platform. Uh, Scott says, Nikki Haley dominated the debate. I like Ramaswamy before the debate, but he looked like a smug hipster last night. I agree with you, Scott. (laughs) I agree with you. John says, Nikki Haley, pretty good and got a lot of good reaction from the crowd. I thought Mike Pence got some good reactions at times, too. So, you know, here's the thing. We're, this is what we have to have happen. We have to have a discussion about somebody other than Trump. And and we've got, you know, I, I really believe that Trump not showing up last night ended up being a good thing, except for the fact that I'm losing the, the, the bet with you. And yeah. um, so... Uh, you know, it, it really gave them an opportunity to to illuminate. You know, you you wouldn't uh, Nikki Haley would not have been able to come off so illuminous last night. Uh, I don't think we would have seen the real Vivek Ramaswamy because he, Ramaswamy just wants to suck up to Trump, doesn't he? That's his role there. And um, Christie's exactly the opposite. He just wants to hammer Trump. <laughs> All right, we'll get off that and do sports. What's going on? Here's our pirate report and sports update with a P man. All right, we'll start uh, with the Pirates. Uh, first big hen, East Carolina preparing for number two, Michigan. Uh, the first uh, week of the regular season, week one, practices in bats today <clears throat> and another practice tomorrow. The team will have Saturday off before they get into full prep mode for the Wolverines next week. Head coach Mike Houston talked about playing before over 107,000. September 2nd in the big house in Ann Arbor. I just want to make sure we see some purple and gold in there. So, uh, you know, should be able to, should be able to find the purple in the sea of uh, maize. And uh, so uh, now it's going to be exciting to play in, uh, you know, that kind of setting. Uh, it's a great opportunity for our program. Uh, our players are very excited about it. And so we're looking forward to it. ACC is looking back into expansion talks. ESPN reports the conference is seriously considering the additions of Stanford, Cal, and SMU out of the American. 
The ACC will reportedly hold further discussions this week with financials being the main concern for current schools. A vote for adding new schools would require 12 of 15 current members to vote in favor. North Carolina, NC State, Clemson, and Florida State are reportedly among the schools not in favor of adding schools due to how it will affect the current distribution of money. Panthers uh, preparing for their reg, uh, preseason finale uh, tomorrow night in, in Charlotte against the uh, Lions. Meantime, head coach Frank Reich said that the wide receiver, DJ Chark Jr., is dealing with a hamstring injury. PGA will crown its champion this week. Top 30 golfers in the FedEx Cup standing square off in Atlanta at East Lake Golf Course Tour Championship. Scotty Scheffler finished the uh, first of the standings. He'll start the tournament 10 under. Victor Hovland came in second. He's eight under. Rory McIlroy finished third and starts the championship at seven under. Our pal Brian Mull writes about golf, thinks Rory's in a position to win the FedEx Cup in back-to-back -back years. It's just all shaping up for Rory. He's right there. He plays East Lake as well as anyone who is in this field. I, I just feel like you know, he's right where he, he likes to be, three shots back. He's got four days to make it up. I just feel like it's going to be Rory. The amazing. Ah, that's it. Four. Four. Now back to the amazing broadcast legend <laughs> Henry Hinton. Because when you're at East Carolina, you quit hitting the buttons. All right, our our sports Morning, update. Morning, Mr. Big Hen. Is good Lord, have you hit them all yet? Dogwood State sure Bank, did. exceptional progressive customer service. Your business is big business. At hey, Dogwood let me ask State you something. We, we got, we got, we, uh, do it right after the top of the hour because we had just enough time for the laugh track. And I got ah, the laugh track. We, we got it. We got to get the laugh track in because it's National Waffle Day, and here is Larry, the cable guy on the Waffle House. But I do like food. I'll tell you what, I enjoy it. The Waffle House. That's one of my favorite places right there. I like the Waffle House. Smothered and covered, by God. You're a communist if you don't eat it smothered and covered. <laughs> don't eat it too late, because you'll eat it smothered and covered, and it'll come out scattered and splattered. I guarantee you. <laughs> it ain't funny. Good Lord, I could have bent over and pooped through a keyhole in there. It was ridiculous. I was madder than a one-legged waitress working at the IHOP. I tell you what. Uh, <laughs> here's your pancakes. Some restaurants claim their food is fresh and fast, but are they friendly? At Moore's, you're treated like family the minute you walk into their doors. With locations in Winterville, New Bern, Swansboro, Moorhead City, and Jacksonville, we've been practicing what we preach since 1945. At Moore's, our barbecue is slow-cooked and smoked over real wood daily until it's so tender it's falling off the bone. Combined with our fresh chicken, cooked-to-order seafood, and homemade fixins, we're sure you'll agree. If it's not Moore's, it's less. Station Meat Farm, along with Lane Angus Beef, bring you Farm to Fork Beef. Stock your freezers now with affordable beef boxes just in time for the grilling season. Farm to Fork Beef brings quality local beef to your family. From your traditional butcher shop, Acre Station Meat Farm. Come on down to Acre Station Meat Farm and find out why we're number one in fresh cuts and friendly service. Acre Station Meat Farm, Highway 32 North, Pine Town. Are you ready for a digital hair color revolution? The Color Master Factory by Chi and LG. A masterpiece of innovation. Unlimited color formulations. Limitless possibilities. Long lasting color. Chi.
big tax credits are back. Get a 30% tax credit, up to $2,000 off your new Mitsubishi electric heat pump install. Let Comfort Master help you take advantage of the tax credits with a qualifying Mitsubishi electric ducted heat pump or non-ducted Mitsubishi electric mini splits. Mitsubishi electric mini splits are ideal for bonus rooms, garages, or sunrooms. If you need a new HVAC unit, call Comfort Master today. Call Comfort Master. Call Comfort Master. Are you game day ready? Anson Belt, the official belt of ECU Athletics. Fifth Street Hardware is the home of the $9 lunch special Tuesday through Fridays. $9 specials every day, including the famous Burger Day on Tuesdays, Flatbread Pizza Wednesday, the famous Fifth Street Hardware Reuben on Thursday, and Fried Fish or Shrimp Friday. Plus, trivia on Wednesday nights and live music every Thursday night. And don't miss the Prime Rib Brunch Buffet returning on Sundays. You heard right, Brunch Buffet with all the great items, including Prime Rib. Fifth Street Hardware in downtown Greenville.
Air Service is back at Pitt Greenville Airport offering safe, clean facilities and flights from American Airlines. That means the short commute, quicker lines, and better prices that get you where you're going fast and easy. See it for yourself. There's great things inside at Pitt Greenville Airport. The best burgers around. Everyone loves a thick, juicy, and fresh burger. Tiebreakers in Greenville, plus the all-new Tiebreakers in Winterville do real burgers better than anybody. So don't just go to any burger-themed restaurant chain. It's time to break the chain and eat local. Tiebreakers, real burgers at its best. Everybody loves burgers. What do you see when you imagine life on the coast? Is it salty? Or sweet? Is it refined? Or a bit wild? Perhaps it's the perfect combination of everything you ever dreamed of. This is the very best of the best of living on the coast. Bow Coast. Air Service is back at Pitt Greenville Airport offering safe, clean facilities and flights from American Airlines. That means the short commute, quicker lines, and better prices that get you where you're going fast and easy. See it for yourself. There's great things inside at Pitt Greenville Airport. Just because voice over IP telephones are the latest technology in the telephone world doesn't mean they're the right choice for you and your business. Whether your internet provider is unable to support a voice over IP phone system or you don't have a need for high-tech features and simply want to stick with a traditional system, Spain Telecom is here to help. Spain Telecom offers a variety of services to keep your business connected and competitive. We're confident we can find the right phone system for you and your business, a system that addresses all your communication needs. Looking for a new phone system that won't break the bank? In addition to new systems, Spain Telecom also offers gently used systems that are in great shape and can save you money. No matter your needs, Spain Telecom has a solution for you. Whether it's voice over IP, on-premise systems, new or used, give us a call at 252-353-2006 and let Spain Telecom help you with your communications needs. Pizza? Ooh. Yes. All pineapple. Yes. No. What's wrong with pineapple on pizza? I only eat pizza with pizza things. That makes sense. Pineapple is a pizza thing. It also makes sense. Is it though? Ahem. <sighs> this tastes great. That we agree on. Let's agree to agree. Pepsi Zero Sugar tastes great. Can't you just pick off the pineapple? You're waking up with Henry Hinton and Patrick Johnson. Wake up, get up, and crank it up. You ready for this? Oh, I'm very ready. Okay, ready? You ready? This is Talk of the Town, now on the IBX Media app. Get it in the App Store or Google Play. The only app you need. Need I say more? Here we go with the show. It's Henry Hinton and Patrick Johnson on Talk 96.3 and 103.7. All right, busy second hour here this morning as we join you tomorrow morning live from Atlantic Beach for the King Mackerel Fishing Tournament kickoff show live at Bite at the Box tomorrow morning. So come out and see us 7 to 9 tomorrow morning as we do the show live from the beach. And then, um, of course, uh, don't forget uh, tomorrow afternoon at 5, it's the debut of Logan Zone. Steve Logan's uh, college football show will debut tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock on 103.7, 96.3 and 94.3 and the IBX Media app. And then Monday night at 6, we've got the uh, first Mike Houston radio show of the year. It's going to be live at Tiebreakers this year, so we hope to see you there. All right, uh, first hour, very spirited conversation about last night's debate. Patrick was about to make a comment when we gave out of time last hour. Patrick, do you remember what it was? Well, I, you watched uh, that hideous uh, circus last night, so... You have a pretty good feel on this, I would think. Any of the eight... I thought it was a great debate, by the way. I think you didn't watch it, so you were making fun of it, but... Any of the eight... Well, I watched enough of it to know I didn't want to watch any more of it. Same thing with the Trump, which, thing, by the way, got 58 million people watching it. So, the, the question uh, I had to you was, Biden matched up against any of the eight on stage... 
I mean, obviously, any of the – I mean, there's probably many that would look better, but is there anyone that would – Biden would be able to outwit on a debate stage of oh, those eight that were up there last absolutely night. Absolutely not. Right. Absolutely not. No, no all uh, the, all eight of those people up there last night, highly inte- intelligent people. You know, and energy the, and virile. More and intelligent sort of than, than Trump, I'm telling you. And you know, Trump would Trump would hit him with zingers and childish comments, but they couldn't debate. Uh, uh, Trump couldn't debate any of those people intellectually. I don't believe. That's just my feeling hmm. about it. Uh, we've got uh, Doug Gray coming up in just a few minutes, so we, we can't uh, waste a lot of time. I don't mean waste, but we can't take a lot of time. Doug Gray from the uh, Marshall Tucker Band is going to join us in just about five or six minutes. But I do have one caller that's been holding a long time, and she held through the break. So I want to get to her and give her an opportunity to speak. She's calling about the debate. Lisa in Moorhead City. Lisa, I'm sorry about the wait. Thank you for waiting. What were your thoughts about the debate last night? Thank you for apologizing. I appreciate that. Um, of course, I watched Trump first um, because we've already the, we've already heard all the talking points the others had to say for the last year and a half. Um, as far as uh, and then it's interesting. I didn't know how many people, fifty eight million, that were watching. Uh, Trump, I'm, but, I'm, I'm uh, having I'm having a hard time with that number. I mean, there how many people are there in the country? So right. well, <laughs> I'm having well, a hard time with that say, number. But anyway. <laughs> Out of all the candidates, he said the one thing that's most important, we have to go back to paper ballots or otherwise we are wasting our time. This is something Trump said? That, that circus. This yes. is something Trump said? Yes. Okay. And I, I believe that um, the other people in, in Vegas, um, your, <laughs> your tech people out there, have already gone paper ballots. It, it has to be done or we cannot trust the election we yeah. just can't trust them are you are you a trump so supporter um <laughs> until we have paper ballots you know there's it doesn't matter who i support because my vote well will not yes be it does of course it does it, it, it who who would if you were if of of the nine people that we've discussed this morning including trump who would you vote for today who would i vote for today well he said paper ballots so trump Okay. All right, Lisa, got to go. Thank you for that. It's 12 Thank after. Um, Patrick, hit us with a few news headlines here, and then Doug Warren is waiting in the wings here, and we've got to get uh, – I mean, I'm sorry, Doug Gray, who is the lead singer for Marshall Tucker Band, and we're going to give away two tickets to see Doug and the Marshall Tucker Band on Saturday night and two backstage passes for you. So that's coming up in just a few minutes. But first, here's Patrick with a few news headlines. All right, a Greenville man behind bars for his possible role in a murder that happened last year. 31-year-old DeBracy Barnes is facing charges for the murder of Christopher Bullock. Police responded to shots fired on Vance Street on the night of August 30th. Last year, they found Bullock on West 5th Street. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. Barnes was a suspect early in the investigation, but new evidence led to his arrest. In Pamlico County, one man has been arrested after a search warrant Related to a residential breaking and entering resulted in stolen guns. David O'Neill is facing multiple charges, including possession of a stolen firearm and, a wep- and weapons of mass destruction. Investigators say while searching his home, they also discovered that O'Neill attempted to use a 3D printer to create parts of a firearm. Pitt County schools working to keep their students and staff safe. New weapons detection technology. The weapons detectors come from a company who works with thousands of schools across the country. The detectors work at a high speed and screen hundreds of book bags per minute. If it sees something out of the ordinary, it will sound and show an alert. All high schools in Pitt County will have two of these detectors. Each elementary and middle school will have one. Croatan High School students head back to campus this year. They'll notice a new addition to the school, New Wing, which adds 14 classrooms. Uh, the entire English department and exceptional children classes will be staged there. The school has over 1,000 students this year, so the extra space was needed. The Wing also features a new state-of-the-art culinary kitchen for their CTE program. Henry? Okay, Michael, let's go. Hello, <laughs> Michael. Michael, and I were communicating during that. We did. We we kind of lost a little time there. Let's go to uh, Rob Martin at Storm Team Nine now and find out what's going to happen for the weekend weather. 
Pleasant conditions getting underway this Thursday morning, then mostly sunny skies this afternoon. A low humidity, highs in the mid-80s at the coast to around 90 for the inland areas. Overnight lows in the low to mid-70s. Hot on your Friday, upper 80s at the coast, mid to upper 90s for the inland areas. Real feels around 105 degrees. Spotty thunderstorm chances start Friday night through the weekend. Real feels hot again on Saturday, coming down a bit on a Sunday. From the Storm Team 9 Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Rob Martin for Talk 96.3 and 103.7. Thank you, Rob. Our news and weather service this hour of Ace Hardware in Greenville. Ace is having another big, uh, great grilling demo event in the parking lot coming up a week from Saturday, September 2nd from 11 to 2. This time they're going to be grilling out there on the Weber grills and the Traeger grills, and they're going to be having products from, wait for it, Omaha Steaks. Come by and get some samples off the grill. Hot off the grill at Ace Hardware coming up a week from Saturday, September 2nd in the parking lot at Ace Hardware at the corner of Fire Tower Road and Charles Boulevard. All right, let's check our stock market numbers brought to you by the Shook Rouse Group of Truist Investment Services, Scott Shook and Thomas Rouse. Yesterday, after a couple of rocky up and down days, we had a good day on Wall Street. The Dow was up 184 yesterday. S&P had its best day since June yesterday was up 48 and the NASDAQ was up 215 points yesterday. <clears throat> Stocks are mixed on the uh, futures this morning. The Dow futures are down 71 S&P, <clears throat> pardon me, S&P up 19 and the NASDAQ is up 151. That's our Shook Rouse Group stock market update. All right, we're going to get a break in and when we come back, we're going to have the lead singer and co-founder of the Marshall Tucker Band. The great Doug Gray will join us right after this uh, timeout. A huge selection of new Toyotas is ready to go at Greenville Toyota. Rush in for the one you want before it's gone. Camrys, just $269 a month. RAV4s, ready to go for just $289 a month. Now at Greenville Toyota. Acre Station Meat Farm, along with Lane Angus Beef, bring you Farm to Fork Beef. Stock your freezers now with affordable beef boxes, just in time for the grill and season. Farm to Fork Beef brings quality local beef to your family. From your traditional butcher shop, Acre Station Meat Farm. Come on down to Acre Station Meat Farm and find out why we're number one in fresh cuts and friendly service. Acre Station Meat Farm, Highway 32 North, Pine Town. Other restaurants claim their food is fresh and fast, but are they friendly? At Moore's, you're treated like family the minute you walk into their doors. With locations in Winterville, New Bern, Swansboro, Moorhead City, and Jacksonville, we've been practicing what we preach since 1945. At Moore's, our barbecue is slow-cooked and smoked over real wood daily until it's so tender it's falling off the bone. Combined with our fresh chicken, cooked-to-order seafood, and homemade fixins, we're sure you'll agree, if it's not Moore's, it's less. At GoEco, we don't just supply the office space. We create solutions for any environment. Our state-of-the-art commercial-grade video display is perfect for watching film with the team. From film study to the field, elevate your game with GoEco. season is approaching. North Carolina weather can damage your roof and before long a small leak can turn into a big problem. Your home is one of your biggest investments so protect it with Wells Home Improvements. We work with all insurance companies for a hassle-free roof installation experience. Call us today and get 10% off your roof installation when you mention this commercial. 252-227-8403 or visit us online at wellshomeimprovements.com. Wells Home Improvements. Local. Honest. Dependable. New Toyotas are ready to go at Greenville Toyota. Shop a huge selection with new inventory arriving daily. Don't see what you want? We'll find it or order it for you. Plus, fresh trades are rolling in and ready to go for delivery today. Rush to Greenville Toyota.
All right, welcome back. Talk of the town, as promised. The uh, Marshall Tucker Band's coming to town uh, this weekend. They're going to be playing the Winterville Watermelon Festival as the headliner Saturday night at the Watermelon, F uh, Watermelon Festival. Marshall Tucker, very familiar band. Love their music for years, and we are uh, very honored to have Doug Gray, one of the founding members and uh, singers for uh, Marshall Tucker, on the telephone with us. Good morning. How you doing, Doug? Hey, man, I'm doing fine. I'm just waiting on the world to change. You know, it's all good. Hey, it's changing quick enough. We don't <laughs> we, we got a lot of well, a lot of changes that aren't too good, so I don't know if we need to be waiting anymore. <laughs> I well, hear you, man. You wait on it. Let's hope, let's hope that it changes soon. Okay? Yeah. I'll be I'll be waiting and watching. Just I'll stand beside you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're excited about you guys coming back to Eastern North Carolina. I know you've been here before. Back in the day, you guys used to play the attic, and uh, right. You uh, you're not too far away. You guys all y'all still live in upstate South Carolina? Actually, I'm closer than you can imagine. I live down at Marble Beach now, and I still have my home in Spartanburg. No kidding. You grew up in Spartanburg, right? I well, I grew up, but I actually moved to Marble Beach in uh, uh, 1972. Okay. And I go back and forth, and have kids up there, and grown kids, and they're professionals, and they do what. Their profession is to do what their profession is. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of funny, but I, I got my grandkids up there, so I, I get to go back and forth quite a bit. That's you awesome. Know, especially when time's off. Right. Well, you're yeah, you are close if you're in Myrtle Beach. Um, Marshall yep. Tucker is uh, kind of the consummate Southern rock group. I guess that's the genre that people kind of hang on you guys. Uh, but we've loved your music for many, many years. You guys had some some really big hits and uh you've been doing it for a long time that you you am i right about this you formed the band with uh with a buddy who um uh, i believe it was Tom, was it tommy caldwell who died in a car accident oh, years ago oh, tommy died in it well first of all toy and i formed the band okay is that, that's his brother right and then yeah his older brother yeah and then uh Tommy was a year younger than us in school. Toy and I, Toy went to Vietnam first, and then I went to Vietnam, and then we came back, and then Tommy had to go away to, to service as well, but he came back early. And uh, then we kind of you know, had already started thinking about bands, but at the same time, we had a three-year break and uh, with going to the military almost four years. And we'd been in bands, Toy Factory, you know, the new generation, stuff like that, all through high school and, and uh, college. And some of them went to college, some of, them, some of us went to bed, and I'm straight on. And, uh, you know, we come back and we just, you know, figured we'd go back to what we knew. And I worked in a bank for a while, and then uh, the same day I got my recording contract, I got offered a office in atlanta which one you think i took yeah <laughs> no kidding no 50, kidding. 50, 50 years later you know but awesome. uh you know the good part about it is is uh, that's exactly what happened forming and and not really realizing that we didn't even have to worry about a name until about six months later and then uh you know we're in the warehouse and the guy comes up and says man would you like to open for uh this, but y'all, he said, y'all sound pretty good. Would you like to open for this uh, band I got coming into my club? The club was called the Ruins in Spartanburg, and uh, when we said, "Well, yeah," we said, "What's what's your name?" and we didn't know what the name was, so we looked at the key that led us into this place we rented, and it had Marshall Tucker on it. We didn't know who Marshall Tucker was, or if there was a real person named Marshall Tucker. So sure enough. Uh, we told him to come back an hour, and so we drank some more beer, and so we said we couldn't come up with a name. And guess what? We uh, just you decided to use the name that was on the key to let us get the building. <laughs> we were just going to use it for the weekend, and uh, here we are. And Marshall, and, am I right about this? Later. I think I remember reading Marshall Tucker was actually a blind piano tuner. Yeah, he had been using that back in the old days when pianos were so huge. And uh, he worked for a company there in Spartanburg, and he was blind. His wife was blind. And, uh, you know, 
he never cared. He all he wanted to do is, is go to church, and he he was the leader of the a church a choir for forty years, and then he retired. There's pictures of him out there. It uh, it uh, platinum records we sent to him and stuff, but he. Excuse me. He never really cared about much about the whole thing. About I was going to say when you when you guys it. got successful, started having these hit records, did he want a piece of the action? <laughs> no, no. It, it, it was kind of out of question at that point. Uh, <laughs> no, because you know he, you know what he did. He, though he did get tired of doing interviews with people about it, that we discovered the name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know you you learn and uh, he. You know, I finally got to meet him. They, they, one of the major networks sent people in so that we could uh, meet each other and have a conversation. And his biggest, uh, his biggest thing was uh, at the end they filmed us, and at the end of the interview, he kept saying, "Well, when it's over and they cut all the mics and TV cameras off and all the cameras off," he says, "I just want to ask you a question and say something." And I said, "Okay, I'll tell you." And when so when everything was unplugged, he said, "Just want to thank you for not screwing my name up." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys have done that name pretty good justice, I would say, over the years with the career that you've had. And uh, you're going to be here uh, on Saturday night, uh, headlining the Winterville Watermelon Festival. I have, uh, by the way, at the end of this interview, we're going to open up the phone lines, and I've got two tickets and two backstage passes. I guess they'll get to meet you in person. Uh, we've got Without a doubt. Without two of our listeners doubt. are going to be there courtesy of uh, us this morning. And I'm going to, I'm going to give away those. So stand by, I'll tell you to call us here in just a minute, but, uh, what's it like these days? I know, uh, you've just been performing for so, so long. You had these big hits. I think, uh, what year was heard in a love song that had to have been in the seventies, right? It was 74, 75. Yeah. But that, and then uh, other people started doing it, like they put it in movies and different artists did it. Then Waylon picked up Can't You See and he put it on the charts. And uh, Waylon Jennings, then uh, people that in the country world, you know, Kitty Wales took one of our songs in 1973 and uh, turned it into her song and she put it out. So we get invited like a couple, two or three times a year to go play the Grand Ole Opry, people look at us like, well, you ain't a country band. Well, they don't realize and haven't really heard but some of the songs that we put out that other people have listened to and remade. I mean, the basic, once you get, well, for right now, Zach Brown, they still do Can't You See It and Say It, right? Yeah. My nephew just happens to be Zach, uh, not Zach, but one of the guys, Clay Cook, that's in Zach Brown Band. Oh, no kidding. Okay. So you got a nephew in the yeah. uh, in that band. That's interesting. Yeah, it's, well, my sister can't sing worth a damn, but you know, <laughs> he, he can sing great. Okay. You know, you're talking about the song Can't You See, which is uh, one of my all time favorite songs. Uh, unfortunately, it's like the only big hit that you guys had that you didn't sing, right? Because Toy sang that one. Yeah, and I, I got a quick explanation for that. Okay. Uh, all my songs <laughs> that Toy wrote, all my songs, Toy, this is true. All my songs that Toy, all the songs that Toy wrote, he always said, man, I sang this from you, and I'd write all the words down real quick, you know, or whatever. Because, I mean, we lived really, really close, and we were always best friends anyway. So he'd say, all right, I'll write this one down real quick for me. And, and I'd write it. I still have the book where I wrote all that stuff down. And uh, we're on the publishing now, too, as well, and the record label. So, you know, it's, it's made it all fairly simple. It's on Sony. But, uh, you know, we we have that song is in, I think, 13 or 14 uh, movies I'll over bet. the last two yeah. years. Yeah, you, you still hear yeah. it all the time. And I'm a I'm going to tell you the reason is Toy come to me and said, man, sing that song. Sing it, testify with it. I said, you sing it to me how you want it sung. And he sung it one or two times. And I went, I don't need to sing this song, man. You need to sing this song. Cause so you told all, him I to sing it. I wear myself out screaming it. You yeah. know? <laughs> so I told him, I told him, I said, go out there and sing it a couple times. It sounded, it sounded better. 
with him singing it. Yeah. So he testified it, he wrote it, and then, you know, everybody asked me what yeah. it was all about. That's awesome. It wasn't about just one woman. It was about a lot of women and a lot of people that leave each other because of, uh, you know, their breakup or their care in each other or, or where they boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever they are. It doesn't matter because we get every age coming up from like 10 years old with bears. All right. The bears we play. Yeah. You I wrote it and he sang it. And Here it is. No, it. He, no, he wrote it. He, he wrote, wrote it. it, but he told me to sing it. Yeah. Oh, and then, he you, and then you heard him sing it and said, you need to sing it. Yeah, crank I crank mean, it up, Michael. I love, I, I love it. I got to hear this. Great song. Marshall Tucker Band. And uh, what an honor. Doug Gray. Hey, it's great to talk to you, man. We appreciate you being on. I can't wait for uh, to see you guys. You're going to be here Saturday night at the Winterville Watermelon Festival. I know you want to invite everybody to come out. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think, um, I think you'll have a big crowd. So thanks for spending a few minutes with us this morning. Well, thank you very much, and uh, we're going to have Crawford Powers there with us, too, so they're going to be they're, they're one of my favorite new couple of groups, okay? Good, good. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate you being on. All right. Thank you, man. All right. Let's open up the phone lines right now. Let's take caller number 8, 252-561-8255 or 866-963-1037. Caller number eight, I'm going to give you two tickets to see Marshall Tucker and Doug Gray leading the band on uh, Saturday night at the Winterville Watermelon Festival and two backstage passes to meet Doug and Toy and the guys. Call us right now, 252-561-8255, 561-8255, and we'll make number eight the winner. All right, thanks again to Doug. We'll be right back. Air Service is back at Pitt Greenville Airport, offering safe, clean facilities and flights from American Airlines. That means the short commute, quicker lines, and better prices that get you where you're going fast and easy. See it for yourself. There's great things inside at Pitt Greenville Airport. The best burgers around. Everyone loves a thick, juicy, and fresh burger. Tiebreakers in Greenville, plus the all-new Tiebreakers in Winterville do real burgers better than anybody. So don't just go to any burger-themed restaurant chain. It's time to break the chain and eat local. Tiebreakers, real burgers at its best. Everybody loves burgers. What do you see when you imagine life on the coast? Is it salty? or sweet? Is it refined or a bit wild? Perhaps it's the perfect combination of everything you ever dreamed of. This is the very best of the best of living on the coast. Bow Coast. Air Service is back at Pitt Greenville Airport, offering safe, clean facilities and flights from American Airlines. That means the short commute, quicker lines, and better prices that get you where you're going fast and easy. See it for yourself. There's great things inside at Pitt Greenville Airport. Just because voice over IP telephones are the latest technology in the telephone world doesn't mean they're the right choice for you and your business. Whether your internet provider is unable to support a voice over IP phone system or you don't have a need for high-tech features and simply want to stick with a traditional system, Spain Telecom is here to help. Spain Telecom offers a variety of services to keep your business connected and competitive. We're confident we can find the right phone system for you and your business, a system that addresses all your communication needs. Looking for a new phone system that won't break the bank? In addition to new systems, Spain Telecom also offers gently used systems that are in great shape and can save you money. No matter your needs, Spain Telecom has a solution for you. Whether it's voice over IP, on-premise systems, new or used, give us a call at 252-353-2006 and let Spain Telecom help you with your communications needs. Pizza? Ooh. Ah, yes. All pineapple. Yes. No. What's wrong with pineapple on pizza? I only eat pizza with Pizza things. That makes sense. Pineapple is a pizza thing. It also makes sense. Is it though? Ahem. <sighs> this tastes great. That we agree on. Let's agree to agree. Pepsi Zero Sugar tastes great. Can't you just pick off the pineapple? Don't be a 
upset when you wake up just before your alarm goes off? Oh, no. That's just more time you get to listen to Henry Hinton. Oh, yeah. Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton and Patrick Johnson on Talk 96.3 and 1037. All right, we have a winner of the Marshall Tucker tickets. Deborah Payne is going to the uh, go see Marshall Tucker Saturday night at the Winterville Watermelon Festival. She not only gets two tickets to the Marshall Tucker Band show, she also is going backstage. Give her two backstage passes. She'll get to meet uh, Doug Gray and Toy and the whole band, the Marshall Tucker Band, who's going to be here Saturday night headlining the Winterville Watermelon Festival. So we get to the Watermelon Festival. We know that the Collard Festival is not far behind. And, of course, that means the uh, uh, the biggest art show, I think, in eastern North Carolina, the uh, Aiden Art Show. Here to talk about that is David Springer and Betty Lou White. Good morning, folks. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. It's, it's uh, Collar Festival time. Yes, it is. We will be there live the uh, second Friday, I think. Uh, it's always the, the first weekend after Labor Day, right? Yes. That's right. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to be out there live, as we always are, on the stage, kicking it off on that Friday morning. But before that, uh, of course, uh, one of the big things that happens is the art show, which is why you're here this morning. Betty Lou, tell us what is happening with the Collard Festival Art Show this year. Well, we, um, we'll be getting ready to accept sub- admissions, submissions. Uh, we will do art setup on Saturday morning to get ready for everything. And then starting Sunday afternoon, we will accept uh, art entries. All right. And, David, this is all kinds of art. Tell us the, the, the different categories that people can enter. Yeah, that's right. So we have uh, youth categories. We have uh, youth from you know birth up to the second grade. And then we have a uh, category for grades three through five. Then we have grades 6 through 8, and then we have high school, grades 9 through 12, and then we have the adult categories. So we have uh, painting categories with acrylic, oil, and watercolor. Uh, We have several categories for photography, landscape, architectural, still life, macro, people, wildlife, and pets. Uh, We have uh, categories for creative design, drawing, which includes pencil, pastel, pen and ink, and charcoal, and we have 3D, a 3D category, and multimedia. So any type of art that can be created, pretty much, uh, mm-hmm. uh, we'll be accepting at the show. And, and Betty Lou, uh, what are the dates for submission? And then the, I love the fact that you then open up the all of the entries uh, to the public, and they can come in and see them. Yes, um, art submission will be Sunday, August 27th, from two to five. And Monday, August 28th, from 9 to noon. So that's this week. This week. This coming and week. This 4 to weekend. 8 p.m. Yeah. yeah, this weekend. So Sunday, you, Monday. If you want to submit something, you got to do it Sunday or Monday. Sunday that's or right. Monday. You may submit up to three pieces. The adults, there is a registration fee of $5 per piece, and there is no registration fee for the youth. And uh, how do you submit? Do you just bring it to, to Aiden? Well, we have a couple of options this year. Uh, you can fill out a paper copy, but we are also now online. So you can go to www.aidencollardfestival.com and uh, click on the art show icon. Right. And you can go ahead and electronically submit your information. So when you bring your art, that will already be in the system, and it'll help, hopefully help it go a little bit quicker. So uh, if the art show is going to be going on during the Collard Festival, David, I'm assuming that the judging will take place uh, early next week, right? That's right. The judging, I think, takes place on uh, next Thursday. Mm-hmm. August 31st. And so 31st, the judging yeah. will take place, and all the uh, – Ribbons will be, you know, attached, and so when people come to view, they'll see who won, you know, awards, and and then we'll have also we'll have a uh, a um, ceremony, a uh, award ceremony, which will be let me see the following, the reception and award ceremony will be Thursday, September the seventh. So all the artists will be invited to the reception, and so we'll have an award ceremony for the youth. And then we'll have a reception, and we'll have an award ceremony for the adults. Uh, who judges it? Is it a big secret? Are there secret judges? <laughs> no, they're not necessarily secret, but we have a certain we have a judge for each. So we have a judge for photography, mm-hmm. 
-hmm. And then we have a judge for the adult art, and then we have a youth uh, art judge as well. All right, so uh, so you submit Sunday and Monday. You, they're judged on next Thursday, the thirty right. first, and then the show opens when? When can people start seeing the art? The Tuesday after Labor Day. Okay, which is what um, September, September the fifth. September fifth, and mm -hmm. it's going to stay open through the Collard Festival. We will be That's open right. through September tenth. Okay, That's Sunday through Sunday. Mm -hmm. So, and where will where will the art be on display? The community building in the in the Aiden mm -hmm. Community Center, yeah. which is a great asset that y'all have there in Aiden. Yeah, it's a very right. nice venue. You know, very wonder. It's a wonderful show. Yeah. So you know, we encourage folks to come out, and anybody that comes to the Collar Festival certainly should come by and yeah, check out the art. And it's a good little respite from the heat if it's hot outside. You know, <laughs> folks can come in and check out the art and and the history. What are the, the, what are the chances it's going to be hot outside? <laughs> <laughs> Another good thing is when you come to the art show and you walk around and you view, you get to vote. Mm -hmm. We have an award called Viewer's Choice. Oh. And so the general public can come in and they can pick their favorite piece of art and vote for it. Okay. Adults will vote for the adult category and youth will vote for their age, you know, for their category. Okay. So not only do we have regular place ribbons and best in show we also have viewers choice all right uh if people want more information david uh you mentioned you have a website what yes, is the sir. website location the website is www.adencollardfestival.com and uh, i bet and you also see uh, you have an email also if you want to if you have questions i guess Looks yes. like that's Aiden Art Show at gmail.com. Yes. Aiden Art Show at gmail.com. All right. So the Aiden Art Show is a big deal every year. It's always part of the, the uh, uh, Collard Festival, a big part of it. This is the 14th annual Aiden Collard Festival indoor art show. And uh, if you want to be a part of it, you want to submit your art, you got Sunday and Monday, right? Sunday you gotta, and Monday. You got to get on the ball here. That's right. You got to finish right. up the, those acrylics and get them in there on Sunday. All right. Anything we uh, didn't mention that you want to say? Anything I didn't, I didn't ask you? I think we're good. All right, uh, we good. just look forward to having everybody come out and view all, right, great. all the unique art that we'll have available. Good to see you. David, yeah. anything? That's a wonderful show. It's a good family event. Uh, we have art that, uh, you know, we have a lot of youth art. We have, you know, the Aiden Art Community, mm -hmm. Pitt County. We've got... Uh, ECU, we always have a lot of participation from artists associated with the university, be it professors or students. So it's a wonderful show. You'd be amazed at the yeah. artwork that we have there. All right, great. Thank you both for coming by this morning. Good to see you. Thank yeah, you. Thank good you. luck. Thank we'll you. see you at the Collar Festival. All right. Yes, I'll be you. there. All right, uh, Betty Lou White and uh, David Springer from the Aiden Collar Festival Art Show. All right, 843. We'll be right back. Hey folks, Henry Hinton here. As you know, I've been talking about Carolina Vision Care for years. The doctors and staff at Carolina Vision Care are special folks to my family. They've been taking care of us for years. Not only do we feel we get the top level of eye care with the Macintosh family of optometrists, but we also get all of our eyewear right on the spot. And if you haven't seen the new renovations, you're really going to be surprised at the beautiful changes in the office. Carolina Vision Care carries all of the top lines of eyeglass frames, including Gucci, Prada, Bevel, LA Iwerks, Calvin Klein, Nine West, Maui Gym, Oakley, and many, many more. If you need an eye appointment, give them a call. There are two locations of Carolina Vision Care, Arlington Boulevard near the Dickinson Exchange, and the new office on Fire Tower Road. Call 252-752-4380 for your appointment to Carolina Vision Care. Dr. Tom, Natalie, and Scott McIntosh will take good care of you. Carolina Vision Care. I trust them with my eyes. You should, too. No matter where you live in eastern Carolina, all roads lead to Lee Chevrolet Buick in Washington. Find your new Chevrolet car, truck, or SUV today at Lee Chevrolet, where we treat you like family. New models are arriving daily. If we don't have what you're looking for, we can probably find it. Come see us or visit us online at LeeChevrolet.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. And remember, all roads lead to Lee Chevrolet Buick, Highway 264 West in Washington. With U.S. Cellular, it's just $19.99 per line for one, two, or three lines. So you don't need that robot daughter you built to get a fourth line for family plan pricing. Oh, Robe Elizabeth? She's not going to like that. The robots will prevail. Oh, boy. 
Get the low rate of $19.99 per line. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Visit uscellular.com for details. Visit authorized U.S. Cellular agent Carolina Communications at 536 Pamlico Plaza, Washington, and 1725 West Arlington Boulevard, Greenville. U.S. Cellular prepaid is built to keep you connected. It's why we offer an unlimited plan for just $40 a month with hotspot access. Plus, right now, you'll also be able to get a smartphone for just one single penny. With U.S. Cellular prepaid, get an unlimited plan for $40 a month, plus a new phone for just a penny. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Visit uscellular.com for details. Visit authorized U.S. Cellular agent Carolina Communications with locations in Kinston, Plymouth, Edenton, Washington, Farmville, Aden, Greenville, Tarboro, and Nashville. Fifth Street Hardware is the home of the $9 lunch special Tuesday through Fridays. $9 specials every day, including the famous Burger Day on Tuesdays, Flatbread Pizza Wednesday, the famous Fifth Street Hardware Reuben on Thursday, and Fried Fish or Shrimp Friday. Plus, trivia on Wednesday nights and live music every Thursday night. And don't miss the Prime Rib brunch buffet returning on Sundays. You heard right, brunch buffet with all the great items including prime rib. Fifth Street Hardware in downtown Greenville. Work is redundant. redundant. Take this job and your talk shouldn't be. This is Henry Hinton and Talk of the Town on Talk 96.3 and 103.7. All right, 846. Uh, we are back live in the studio this morning. Uh, we got our boating report coming up after Patrick does sports in a minute, uh, but I continue to get a lot of uh, great social media contact and emails this morning regarding the debate and our discussion. I thought we had a great discussion about the debate this morning. Uh, we had, uh, and we had uh, Jill from uh, Grifton who called in, who said she is a Democrat who was impressed with Nikki Haley, but said she would still support Joe Biden. And when I pressed her on the issue of the corruption with Hunter Biden and um, the fact that he seems to have dementia, she said she doesn't believe he has dementia. So um, Robert, one of our listeners from up in the Columbia this morning, has sent me this. He says, Henry, the bottom line, as I see it, regarding your interview with a woman who seemed to be a somewhat reasonable Democrat, number one, the typical American voter is simply unaware of, not interested in, or unwilling to accept the truth about bumbling Biden and his corruption administration. I think you're right on target, Bob. Perhaps more troubling is the lack of faith many Americans, including me, have in the integrity of the voting process. For example, who in their right mind would ever vote for John Fetterman? Um add to this drastic decline in church membership and what you have is a recipe for disaster and disaster is defined as joe biden the sequel <laughs> many thanks to you and your staff for your tireless tireless efforts toward educating all of us keep the faith bob bob uh i agree with almost everything you said except the fetterman thing i think they did vote for fetterman up there because i think uh, you know he was he was running against dr oz and oz was you know, he was, he was Trump light and, you know, he couldn't beat John Fetterman. So what does that say about Trump being able to win Pennsylvania? <laughs> That's the frustrating thing to me is that the hardcore Trump people can't, uh, can't see that. I, I can't even read and I won't read some of the comments I've gotten from Trump supporters this morning. I mean, some of, some of the Trump supporters are just, you know, it worries me what would happen if Trump doesn't get elected or how these people, the, the way they react to me and the stuff that the crazy stuff they send me, what's, what was, what's going to happen in the country if these are the people that are get, getting mad that Trump doesn't win? It's frightening. You should read some of the stuff people send me. It's unbelievable. All right, 848, let's do sports. Our sports update this morning brought to you one of our pirate partners this morning, our good friends at Fantastic Sam's. Here's Patrick with our pirate update and sports uh, sports report, and then we're going to do okay. the boating report. Uh, P-Man? Yep, all right. Uh, East Carolina preparing for number two Michigan. Practices and pads again today, and they'll practice tomorrow, have Saturday off. Then they'll get in full prep mode for the Wolverines. Head coach Mike Houston talked about playing before over 107,000 on September 2nd at the Big House in Ann Arbor. Uh, I just want to make sure we see some purple and gold in there. So, uh, you know, should be able to should be able to find the purple in the sea of uh, maize. And uh, so uh, now it's going to be exciting to play in, uh, you know, that kind of setting. 
Uh, it's a great opportunity for our program. Uh, our players are very excited about it, and so we're looking forward to it. ACC is looking back into expansion talks. ESPN reports the conference is seriously considering the additions of Stanford, Cal, and SMU. The ACC will reportedly hold further discussions this week with financials being the main concern for current schools. Keep in mind that in order to add new schools, the league's 15 members would have to get 12 votes in the positive. Right now, there are four holdouts. So we'll see what happens. Panthers will wrap up the regular season finale tomorrow night at Bank of America Stadium, hosting the Lions. Wide receiver DJ Chark Jr. is dealing with a hamstring injury. Panthers open the regular season on the road in Atlanta in September 10th. PGA to crown its champion this weekend. Top 30 golfers in the FedEx Cup standings square off East Lake Golf Course in Atlanta. Tour championship on the line. Scotty Scheffler. Finished first in the standing, so he'll start 10 under. Victor Hovland, who was sensational last week in winning the BMW, uh, he'll begin eight under while Roy McElroy finish uh, third in the uh, points, and he starts the championship at seven under. Our guy Brian Ball, golf writer, says Roy's in prime position to make it back-to-back -back FedEx Cups. It's just all shaping up for Roy. He's right there. He plays East Lake as well as anyone who is in this field. I, I just feel like, you know, he's right where he, he likes to be, three shots back. He's got four days to make it up. I just feel like it's going to be Rory. That's it. Four. Four. We now send it back to the amazing broadcast legend, Henry Hinton. Joe Bitt. Morning, Mr. Big Hen. <laughs> That's it, by the way. He's working harder That's than it. an ugly stripper. That's it. That's it. You're That's having it. a hard time with your, your buttons That's this it. morning. No, that was Michael went over it. Michael, Michael knows one button to hit. Which one was it Michael that. played? The, uh... He's working harder than an ugly stripper. <laughs> what that happen? Michael should with... send that. I know. Michael should send that to me and let me handle the sound. Yeah, bites. Michael, He's... send that to him. Do you have all That's that it. stuff on one of those uh, instant replay things? Or on the you... roadcaster, yeah. Yeah, you do. I need one of those. You need a road there with you in the studio. Yeah, I do. I mean, they don't you, give me any good stuff, could, all the good toys. I used to have one in here. Remember, Michael? Oh, yeah. Years ago, what could, happened? What, what, what do you Michael, mean, oh, yeah, Michael's Michael acting could, like I, was, I couldn't handle it. Oh, yeah. Michael could load your cuts, and um, <laughs> you could play them there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, that is our sports update and pirate report brought to you by Fantastic Sam's Cut and Color with locations all over eastern North Carolina. I was in there earlier this week at the Bells Fort location and got myself a good little quaff cut by my buddy a Amy over there. In fact, my wife even said to me yesterday, your hair looks terrific. Amy does a great job, and she it does. It is looking good today. It is looking good today. Look into the monitor. You know what yeah. it looks like to me? Great. White. It looks white. Yeah, I yeah. used to Were be salt and pepper. It's more just salt now. You need color. Yeah, I'm not putting that purple stuff on my hair. You let your wife put on your hair, Michael. It's not when purple. Michael colors his hair. If your hair is purple, then you're Michael. Your person I, I got up. some bad news for you. See, so, you know that hair. Your wife gets a little heavy handed on that stuff <laughs> on your She's hair. Perfect. I'm She's just gonna perfect be honest every with time. You. I'm gonna be honest <laughs> with you. She is every perfect now and every then time. it comes in and you got a little bit of a purple tint to it. No. And I, and I don't want to say anything, but it's like when I come in and I look at you, I kind of go, whoa, what is that? Is what 100 is that on Michael's head? 100% not true. <laughs> but he's got the purple not tent. True. It is hilarious. It is hilarious. You've seen, you've seen the purple, purple tent, tent, haven't you? Uh, I've seen the purple tent. You guys haze, are blind. Yes. Michael, uh, Patrick, do you have any, uh, let's look take a look at you. Do you have any? Do you have any uh, – you got a hat on, so I can't – We never you, know because we always had a hat, hat on. Yeah. Exactly. Do you have any gray hair now? I mean, you're like you're like in your mid fifties. So I mean, you're beginning to get some. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Uh, I will neither confirm nor deny any of this. So you're not quite I'm in the mid fifties, but he's but he's older than uh, Vivek Raswami, Ramaswamy. <laughs> but he's still Patrick is still a smart ass uh, millennial like R R Vivek. I don't know if I'm a millennial, but Vivek is I almost a millennial, isn't he? I mean, you would almost have I to say he, he was be. a millennial. Yeah, I think he may be. Yeah, he was in that group. Because he's, he's younger than 40, right? Yeah. 
Well, there you go. All right, let's do the uh, let's do the boating report this morning. Brought to you by Park Boat Company, Manio Marine, and Inner Banks Marina. Looks like good boating today. East winds ten to fifteen, becoming southeast late. Everything's going to lay down today. It's going to be flat. Should be a very good day for boating on the sounds and rivers. On Friday, south winds ten to fifteen, seas three to four offshore, and uh, again, sounds and rivers will be uh, fairly flat on Friday. How about Saturday? The wind kicks back out to the southwest, 10 to 15. So it's going to be kind of a normal day on the uh, sounds and rivers and uh, three to four on the oceans, uh, on the ocean uh, waves, rather. And uh, the uh, southwest winds will bring some moderate chop in the sounds and rivers. And then we go back to east winds on Sunday when everything's going to lay down and be very flat. So a great boating weekend on our park boat company, Manio Marine Park Boat Company uh, and Interbanks Marina uh, um, boating report. If you want uh, more information about how to get a uh, space in the -the state-of-the-art dry stack storage facility in Washington at Interbanks Marina, call them at 252-623-1314, 623-1314. All right, I don't think, do we have time? I guess we do have time for the laugh track, don't we? All right, Larry the Cable Guy. Today is National Waffle Day. Here's Larry the Cable the Guy on our uh, laugh track. But I do like food. I'll tell you what, I enjoy it. The Waffle House, that's one of my favorite places right there. I like the Waffle House. Smothered and covered, by God. You're a communist if you don't eat it smothered and covered. But don't eat it too late because you'll eat it smothered and covered and it'll come out scattered and splattered. I guarantee you. It ain't funny. Good Lord, I could have bent over and pooped through a keyhole in there. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I was madder than a one-legged waitress working at the IHOP. I tell you what. <laughs> Here's your pancakes. <laughs> Larry the Cable Guy. All right, thanks to Doug Gray. Don't forget the Winterville Watermelon Festival kicks off tomorrow. They've got the uh, Fleetwood Mac Trivia Band tomorrow, uh, Tribute Band tomorrow night and then Marshall Tucker Band on Saturday night. Congratulations again to Deborah Payne, our winner. We will be live at Bite at the Box in Atlantic Beach tomorrow morning, kicking off the King Mackerel Fishing Tournament. See you there down at Atlantic Beach tomorrow. Station Meat Farm, along with Lane Angus Beef, bring you Farm to Fork Beef. Stock your freezers now with affordable beef boxes, just in time for the grilling season. Farm to Fork Beef brings quality local beef to your family. From your traditional butcher shop, Acre Station Meat Farm. Come on down to Acre Station Meat Farm and find out why we're number one in fresh cuts and friendly service. Acre Station Meat Farm, Highway 32 North, Pine Town. Are you ready for a digital hair color revolution? The Color Master Factory by Chi and LG. A masterpiece of innovation, unlimited color formulations, limitless possibilities. Long lasting color. Chi. Big tax credits are back. Get a 30% tax credit, up to $2,000 off your new Mitsubishi electric heat pump install. Let Comfort Master help you take advantage of the tax credits with a qualifying Mitsubishi electric ducted heat pump or non-ducted Mitsubishi electric mini splits. Mitsubishi electric mini splits are ideal for bonus rooms, garages, or sunrooms. If you need a new HVAC unit, call Comfort Master today. Call Comfort Master. Call Comfort Master. Are you game day ready? Anson Belt, the official belt of ECU Athletics. 
5th Street Hardware is the home of the $9 lunch special Tuesday through Fridays. $9 specials every day, including the famous Burger Day on Tuesdays, Flatbread Pizza Wednesday, the famous 5th Street Hardware Reuben on Thursday, and Fried Fish or Shrimp Friday. Plus, trivia on Wednesday nights and live music every Thursday night. And don't miss the Prime Rib Brunch Buffet returning on Sundays. You heard right, Brunch Buffet with all the great items, including Prime Rib, 5th Street Hardware in Dallas. Downtown Greenville. Station. 